I'm going to start this talk. Really, I'm talking about the piece of music that is in Veneria, but I want to talk about the history of that piece. And to do that, I have to start about 40 years ago. I was an art student, and like all art students, I was very interested in music. So I was starting to be aware that there were some new forms of music emerging, and that the nature of the way these musics were organized was different from anything that I had seen before. Probably the first piece that really made me aware of this was a piece by Terry Riley, which some of you may know, it's called In C. So In C is a very simple piece of music. It has just 52 bars in it. They're all in the key of C. And the instruction to the musicians is very, very simple. You start on bar one, you play bar one as many times as you like, then you move to bar two, and you play that as many times as you like, and you work your way through the 52 bars of the piece. There's no coordination between the musicians about when each one of them moves on to their next bar. So people move when they feel like moving onto the next bar. So I've made a one of my typically very confusing diagrams of this process. So bar one, bar two, bar three, four, five, so on and so on. Now, let's look at, here's the first musician. Let's say he decides to play bar one four times, then he goes on to bar two, bar three, bar four, bar five, bar six, bar seven, like that. And now let's see what happens. Let's see what happens when you have several musicians doing this together. So what happens is the piece starts in unison, and gradually it becomes more and more complex and rich as more and more different musical bars are being played simultaneously over one another. So. What impresses me about this piece, what impressed me then, was that, first of all, it's a very complex piece to hear. There's a lot of richness and a lot of interest in it, but it's a very, very simple piece to play. The construction of the piece is extremely simple. It's self-constructing. This, this idea, which I shall talk about a little bit more, is really not just an idea about how music can be made. It's, about, it's an idea about how things in general could be organized. It's an idea that is very appealing to lifelong anarchists like myself. I heard another piece that had a very, very big influence on me, which was um, a piece called It's Gonna Rain by the composer Steve Reich. It's Gonna Rain is one of the simplest pieces of music that ever changed anyone's life. Um, it's a loop of tape, I think less than two seconds long, of uh, a southern preacher saying, It's gonna rain! Like that. But it's looped, so it goes, It's gonna rain! It's gonna rain! It's gonna rain! It's gonna rain! And the loop keeps going. It's, very, it's a very intense sound. But the trick in the piece is that he put exactly the same loop on two tape recorders. And then he ran the tape recorders at very, diff very slightly different speeds. So what happens, just as you see here, is that these two loops move out of sync with each other. And so the, the piece becomes, first of all, unison, then a very close echo, then a further away echo, then a, a real moiré. So once again, this is a very economical way of making a piece of music. Um, it's very economical in that the inputs are very small, two seconds of sound. Um, the result is very, very big. There's a huge adventure in this piece. It's, it's one of the most extraordinary sonic experiences that I ever had. So at the t same time I was starting to become interested in these pieces of music, I was also reading quite a lot about cybernetics. So cybernetics is not much in fashion at the moment, but actually it was a very important moment in Western thinking, I, I believe, when for the first time people really came to grips the, with the idea that systems 
operate differently from the parts of the systems. Cybernetics was the first language that I found that could talk about this kind of music. This, this kind of music didn't really belong in the European classical tradition. And it was really when I started looking at cybernetics that I started to realize that there was a new theory of organization. And by organization, I mean of how things belong together and how things become what they are. So it's to do with evolution, it's to do with ecology as well, actually. Um, so what, what you see in this pyramid is a flow of information in one direction. All the intelligence is located at the top, and each layer down has less and less freedom and less and less responsibility, and less and less pay, actually, as well. <laughs> so this form of organization assumes that intelligence only flows in one direction. And, uh, Two other versions of that still with us today are the church, the Vatican, let's say. The church is organized in exactly the same pyramidal way, and the orchestra. These, these ancient forms of organization still are still with us. Vatican, orchestra, and army. Um, so here's, a, here's another description of another picture of that idea of how int intelligence is disseminated. What, um, what this kind of music made me start thinking about was the idea that maybe that was a better picture. That really the piece, of, the composer was a seed and the seed grew into something. So one of the characteristics of the Steve Reich piece and the Terry Riley piece and many, many other pieces of music like this, including much of what I've done, is that you can't describe it before it happens. It's not fully written. The, the piece of music doesn't exist in some abstract form before it appears as a piece of music. So a lot of my music is made by exactly the process I'm now going to describe. And I shall make it sound so simple that you'll all run home and think you can make one yourself. Let's, uh, let's say that this is a sound here, this green line. It goes Okay, and here's another one, it goes bing, bing, bing. And here's another one, it goes And there's another one that goes Okay, so let's, let's say we, we make a, some kind of a machine that makes all of those noises. It can be four different machines. They can be loops of tape. It could be any way of making those noises. If I set that machine going, so all of these noises are happening together, we get a result, something like that. So, Immediately you can see that from a very simple system you get rather beautiful and complex new relationships. So um, music for airports was made in exactly this way. Um, at least the second and fourth pieces of music for airports use this format. When I started working like this, I started to notice that I was producing music that I had never imagined. And this, this was the thrill for me. So to, to set in motion a process where I became just like anybody else in the audience, where I was listening to the music make itself. And there's a word for this thing. Self, autopoiesis means self-making. And this, this music was, this was very fascinating to me that I could set up a set of conditions, a set of little rules, if you like, and then I could watch them work together and be uh, an audience to the result. So what I then started doing was I, I started noticing that certain parts of this process would produce results that I really, really liked. 
say, let's, let's say that I really like that piece there, that section. Maybe that's uh, one minute long, two minutes, something like that. So I thought, what happens if I take that section and treat it in exactly the same way as I treated any one of these individual elements? So by this time, I was quite interested in um, two areas of science that um, one was a mathematical area called cellular automata so that, that was one area of science which involves little mathematical games with very simple sets of rules that produce very 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 interesting results I mean so interesting I have given whole lectures about cellular automata and the the other area was genetics of course where exactly this process happens in nature.